My dearly beloved in Christ, during this time after Easter, the Paschal season, we reflect upon the different apparitions of our Lord to his apostles, to the holy women, etc., but not very many are recorded in Scripture. Some 11 apparitions are recording or, or just mentioned without, and some of them without even any description. But no doubt our Lord appeared much more often to his apostles, explaining to them, you might say, filling in the details of what they were to preach, the foundation of his church, the sacraments, etc. And we can just imagine their joy each time they saw our Lord after the resurrection. He had said to them, as we read in today's gospel, at the Last Supper, a little while and you shall not see me. And again a little while and you shall see me. And your heart shall rejoice. Well, of course, our Lord was to undergo his passion the very next day. He would be buried. He would be taken from them and they would no longer see him until Easter Sunday when he rose again from the dead. So a little while and you shall not see me. And again a little while and you shall see me and your heart shall rejoice. They saw our Lord the evening of the resurrection. They saw him the following Sunday. They saw him in Galilee. And on one occasion, he appeared at a preordained place, and there were 500 brethren, various disciples, etc., gathered there to see our Lord. But eventually, the time would come when he would ascend to his Father. And then they would no longer see him. But our Lord, in his wisdom and goodness, had a way of even remaining with them after his ascension. And of course, that is his presence in the Holy Eucharist. And it is interesting that the very last words of our Lord before he ascended into heaven were to go forth and teach all nations, etc. And then he said, and behold, I am with you all days, even to the consummation of the world. How is he with us? Of course, in the Blessed Sacrament. We can even receive him in Holy Communion. But how complacent we tend to become regarding his presence. We know our Lord is there. We believe it. But perhaps we are reluctant to spend time with him. We become complacent. And so the wonderful 40 hours devotion is an opportunity for us to spend more time with our Lord to express our gratitude for his presence, to reflect upon his great love for us in being in the tabernacle day and night, day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. I am with you all days, even to the consummation of the world. What love, what love of our Lord for us to be with us, even after he ascended to his Father in heaven. Regarding the Holy Eucharist, let us be careful not to become so complacent that we are too eager to leave the church after Mass is over or fail to make an adequate thanksgiving. There's a wonderful book on the Holy Eucharist called The Blessed Eucharist by Father Mueller. There are many other books, but that is one I particularly enjoy reading. And he tells a story in there about a man who would leave as soon as he could after communion was over. And the priest noticed this after Mass. He would be in the sacristy unvesting and he could see out the window this man leaving right away as soon as possible. And one day he sent the altar boys. He said, take a candle and take the bells and go out and walk along with this man and ring the bell and walk there with a candle. And you can imagine the man's embarrassment when the altar boys were doing this as he was walking away from the church. They were waiting for him when he came out the door and ringing the bell and going with him. And he said, what are you doing? And they said, well, Father told us to honor the blessed sacrament which is within you since you are not doing so. 
I remember once I was a boy, young man, seminarian, and the rector told us one, one week there was an elderly priest, and he said, this priest has asked for some seminarians to come and just do some chores on the weekend. Now, it was in May. It was probably later in May because I remember it's quite warm. And the area where this priest, where this parish was, his church, was a tourism area. It's close to a lake. And so we were there. Those of us that volunteered, we stayed overnight in the rectory. We helped him out. He was older, very nice man, good priest. But on Sunday, and I was shocked at this, on Sunday after the priest gave his last blessing, and of course this is after they no longer had the last gospel, he hadn't even left the sanctuary and people were charging for the doors. And I was shocked because I'd never seen that in my parish, that wasn't done. And like I said, this was in a tourism area. But imagine, you can imagine why these people lost their faith because they didn't appreciate the presence of our Lord in their church. And they had just received him, likely, many of them had just received our Lord in Holy Communion. And they were literally pushing one another, getting out of the church as fast as they could, as though the church were on fire. And I always remembered that. I was shocked. But it indicates how sad it is that we can become complacent and take for granted our Lord's presence and lose the appreciation we should have for his presence in our midst. We can express our gratitude by making visits, spending time with our Lord, because if we love him, we will want to be with the one we love. And some people will say, well, I don't know what to say. I go to make a holy hour, I'm in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament, I can't think of anything to say. But sometimes words even get in the way. Because if we love someone, we want to be there. And our heart speaks to our Lord by the love that we have for him. This love is not a feeling. Love is in the will. It is an act of the will. And it's something to pray for that we will grow in our love. And we prove our love for God, of course, by being obedient to his commandments. Not by how much we feel that we have love. There's a beautiful ejaculation I like to pray. Dearest heart of Jesus, we implore that we may ever love thee more and more. So it's something to pray for, to grow in charity, love of our Lord who loves us so much. And let us reflect upon what a tremendous blessing it is to be with Jesus. You can just imagine how the apostles felt at the thought that he was going to leave them. He would be separated from him. But then how they rejoiced when he said, but then you will see me again after his resurrection. And what the joy they experienced during those times when our Lord appeared after his resurrection. I'd like to read a few verses from a reading, a meditation from the imitation of Christ on friendship with Jesus. Something to reflect upon. What can the world profit thee without Jesus? To be without Jesus is a grievous hell, and to be with Jesus a sweet paradise. If Jesus be with thee, no enemy can hurt thee. Whosoever finds Jesus finds a good treasure, yea, good above all goods. And he that loses Jesus loses exceeding much and more than if he lost the whole world. How true. How true. Poor souls who lose Jesus, who lose their faith. They've lost everything. And we have our Lord here. We have the true faith. Let us appreciate him. Let us pray during this month dedicated to the Holy Eucharist that we will make better communions, better thanksgivings, that we will be more devout in our visits, and that we will come to appreciate more and more what we have in the Blessed Sacrament. That we will value it. That we will not look upon time spent in the church as boring, as difficult, as a trial. But rather we will want to be there. 
We will want to be with our Lord because we love him. May we grow in our love for our Lord. Sweetest heart of Jesus, we implore that we may ever love thee more and more. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen.